The Nawazuddin Stara, Doom Keto, will be arguably the first of the films that were designed for theatres, but has moved from theatre to back at home OTT platforms. Despite uh, several requests asking me to move on to a verbal review of my films, I've been hesitant primarily because uh, I'm not very good with my words coming flowing out naturally. But I said since technology demands change, I should keep up with times, keep abreast with it. So here am I doing the first of my film reviews after having spent about four decades writing about cinema. This is going to be my first review of a film on camera. Filmmaker Pushpendra Nath Mishra, debut of sorts with cinema, comes up with a very short film. It's made in about less than a hundred minutes. A story of one of those many people who come to Mumbai in search of their dreams, Bombay, corrected as Mumbai by somebody in the film as he comes to Bombay or Mumbai. And there is a police officer given the job of having to trace him in the city of dreams or suffer a transfer at the end of a month. The man who chases his dream also gives himself just a month to ensure that his dreams turn into reality. So we have two stars, two actors. One, Goom Ketu, played by Navasudhi, and the other, Badlani, the inspector played by Anurag Kashyap, a corrupted police inspector. Both of them have a month. One to fulfill his dreams, one to catch the guy dreaming and in Mumbai. The political backdrop is the pressure on the inspector Badlani by a small time politician who happens to be the uncle of Gum Ketu, who has to trace him within a month because of his political power. Now this is the setting into which the story moves. You would believe that this is an ideal story to have a naive town lad, 31 years that's also said, fighting a corrupt city police officer. Tom and Jerry to be at play, but this is not to happen. I suspect somewhere that it is the format change, the platform change, that finds the film edited tardily and a lot of possibilities of conflict between the dreamy, naive town man in Gum Ketu in conflict with law and the corrupt police officer in Badlani just doesn't take off. So if this was planned to be the central theme of the story, then Goom Ketu doesn't take off at all. If like people live, this is just a story that goes into a village man's heart and feel and gets him juxtapositioned into a town, pitchforked into a town, from a town to a city. Even there, the story doesn't carry enough flesh simply because the narrative is very sketchily narrated. As a filmmaker, with a, as a story writer, Goom Ketu has three genres of cinema that he would like to make. A romantic story, a comedy, or a horror film. So his narratives move from each of these kinds of cinema based upon a book that he gets from a person who runs a library, Ramnath Joshi, played as efficiently as ever by Bajendra Kala. And into this narrative that he's talking to a film director, every time you have Bajendra Kala coming in as one of the characters, you have members of his own family coming in as characters. And the narrative gets a little confusing. Not that the filmmaker is running short of actors because 
He gets in for special appearances, Sonakshi Sinha, Ranveer Singh, Nikhil Adwani, Lorraine Gotelbo and Chitrangada. So it's not shortage of people. I'm going to hold back one name and we'll come to that later. So the narrative of each of the genres of stories that he's dealing with invariably brings back people like Bijendra Kala and that's a part of the undoing of the film. But even more importantly, an actor like Nawazuddin has absolutely no punch in his film. I think the script fails him more than he fails the script. So also what is Anurag Kashyap doing in the film? He has about 10-15 minutes walking in and walking out, looking at people. He has big eyes, he's staring here and there. He has a little son who's taunting him on his corruption. That's about all he's doing. They meet a few times, but they miss out on each other because the police officer does not even know that the tenant in his house is the guy he's looking for. The movie in about 100 minutes is wrapped up, disillusioned or wiser. The protagonist goes back to the family. But incidentally, and in the last few minutes, you have Big B coming in. Amitabh Bachchan gets to reading a dialogue written by Ghum Ketu and believes that it is magical. Tries to get across to him, cannot, and therefore ends up delivering the dialogue in one of his films without crediting its source. Adding some meat to this Lather drab narrative is Raghuveer Yadav as Dada or the father of the protagonist and as Bua in a perfectly timed performance, Ila Arun. In fact, Ila Arun is the mainstay of the film as the aunt who encourages her nephew and plays big sister back home with the two brothers played by Raghuveer Yadav and in a terribly, terribly wasted performance, Savanand Kirkkere as the uncle. I believe that even Yadav, Raghuveer Yadav, is a little over the top, but I suspect again it is by design to show him as a traditional town parent who likes to be authoritative, but I think the director errs in the degree in pulling him up or putting him up as a character who is very strict or who is temperamental or mercuric. Overall, I think the fine moments in the movie predictably come in the few minutes that Amitabh Bachchan makes his appearance. A consistently very good performance from Ila Arun, flashes of Nawazuddin as he is. Somewhere around the film, when he's selling one of his uh, humor stories, Gumketu tells the prospective filmmaker that humor is relative and so is taste. I guess so is it about cinema. And I wonder if there will be one too many people who would take this film as something that they would like to sit back and enjoy. I would believe Gumketu is a sad debut of cinema intended for screen, making it to the OTT platform. Better was expected from Goom Ketu. Better was certainly expected from Nawazuddin. But these are early days of cinema's transformation from the theatre to the home. We'll wait and see how it all happens. In the meanwhile, if you are a Nawazuddin fan, watch Goom Ketu. Any which way you're at home, and you know that you're not going to go to the theatre in the near future, so watch Goom Ketu. But overall, watch it for a fine performance from Ila Arun. This is Ravi Chanda signing off his first film review from this panel. Thank you very much.